service, and today we're going to do our lunch and learn for the environmental health services program. And um, we're also on Facebook Live, so if you are watching on Facebook Live and you have any questions, just uh, put those into the comment section and we'll address them as they come up. All right, so our uh, county is broken up into districts that our uh, environmental specialists respond to complaints. Um, whether it's housing or nuisance or uh, mosquito complaints. And you can see that we're pretty much a small department. Um, this doesn't include our water lab employees, but um, Elizabeth Nutt is our division director, and Bernard Endy is our program manager, and then we have uh, several programs underneath there, there, and then we're gonna talk about all of those today. So first of all, the main thing we're gonna talk about today is our housing program. So I am the housing program coordinator uh, for the environmental health uh, division. And um, if you, the reason we're here, the reason we have a, a housing code, if you can think back to a time when you didn't have uh, water or electricity or heat, that stress that it put on your life, um, you had to worry about if your kids were gonna be warm at night, um, how you were going to take a bath. Um, and whether that was just a short period of time, like a day or, couple of weeks, like some of our big uh, ice storms that we've had in the past, uh, that stress that it put on your life. And we have people that live in Tulsa County that live in that stress every single day. So environmental health inspects houses that are in that landlord-tenant, you know, rental property relationship. And when the landlord won't fix the properties, they can call in a complaint to us and we'll do our investigation and orders, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, one thing to think about, um, too, in Tulsa County, we have several areas in Tulsa County that have um, lower life expectancy, and um, the stress caused from your environment, including your house, can affect your life expectancy. So that's why we're here focusing on those areas and trying to improve their housing conditions. So uh, in Tulsa, we have several codes that we uh, work off of. So there is uh, Title 24, and inside the city limits, that's our nuisance code. So we're addressing high grass and weeds and trash dump and debris complaints. And then we have Title 55, and that's our housing code. So that's that landlord-tenant um, situation that we're addressing there. Um, these are the same codes that we use. Uh, working in neighborhoods for the city of Tulsa, so we do work with that department um, to get these complaints taken care of. And then outside of the city, we have the Landlord-Tenant Act, and that is how we um, address housing complaints um, and educate people on how to take care of their housing complaints. And then we also have Title 63, and that is what we um, use to address uh, complaints in the county, like high grass and weeds, trash dump and debris, sewage, and things like that. So um, our complaints, our, inspect our inspections are on a complaint basis. So whether it's by phone or referral or online, um, whenever you um, call into the health department, we like to focus on customer service. So you are actually talking to someone in our department. And um, after we take that complaint, you'll have an environmental specialist call you back and kind of walk you through the process, ask questions about what's going on. Um, not just maybe with the neighbor or the house you're living in, but also the neighborhood. And uh, the way that we respond to that complaint really depends on um, the public health threat. So we, um, we go out and we do an inspection and then we send orders and then that's what we're gonna talk about today, the process. So every year uh, we get about 1,200 housing complaints. So that does not include our mosquitoes, it's just the housing program. And you can see some of the things that we um, investigate like high grass and weeds and different kinds of housing issues, rats and uh, sewage and then mold is one of those that we don't necessarily address directly but we like to take care of uh, what's causing the mold so whether it's poor ventilation or a plumbing leak or something like that that's how we get take, take care of the mold issue. So whenever we do our inspection and uh, we decide you know what kind of a a complaint we're working with, uh, we'll send out different types of orders depending on that violation. So it could be an order to repair for something that's happening in your house and depending on the severity of that 
violation, like if it's an imminent health hazard, we could send an order to vacate. Uh, we can condemn properties in the city of Tulsa, so not the county, but in the city of Tulsa. And then we can also issue um, warnings and citations if we need to, to property owners. Um, we also work really closely with the city of Tulsa uh, for enforcement in different areas. Um, one thing that we started several years ago that's really helping us out with condemned properties is after we condemn a property, and we'll talk about those type of violations on the next slide, um, we will flag the meter with that home so that um, in the future, um, maybe a landlord that's not doing the right thing can't move a family in without them knowing about these violations existing and then they get established in a home and, and not able to get out easily. So. If uh, someone's wanting to move into a rental property in the city of Tulsa and they go down to the city to get their water, if it's a property that's been condemned by the Working and Neighborhoods Department or the city of, or by the Health Department, a flag will pop up and say, call Tulsa Health Department, they'll call us and we can discuss you know, what's going on with that house. That's really helped us in the last couple of years cut down on people getting moved into houses like this that are boarded up by the city not safe to be living in. So here are our condemnable violations. So there are some violations that are so um, much of a threat to your family that we don't want you to live in that house until those violations are taken care of. So with something like heat, which is something that we're focusing on this time of year, um, whether it is inadequate heat where your house isn't you know, keeping the right temperature, using space heaters, um, fire protection, like you don't have smoke detectors. Once we go through that process of the inspection and sending the orders, it is possible to condemn the house. Whenever a home is condemned, it doesn't mean that the city or the county is taking it over. It just means that no one can live in that house until those violations are repaired. So we post our notice and um, you know keep in contact with the owner to try to get those violations taken care of. So some of the things that are really important for us to respond quickly to is sewage. So anytime they're surfacing sewage, um, whether it's in someone's backyard uh, or an apartment complex or from a restaurant, whenever they call in a complaint to the health department, that's like a stop what we're doing and respond. Uh, we post a 48 hour notice of violation and if it's not taken care of in 48 hours notice, we, or within 48 hours, we can pull the water meter from that property. So the idea is that there's no water going into the system no sewage can come out, and then we don't have as much of a public health threat until they get that fixed. So this is the big one this year. Any complaint that comes into the health department, um, even if it doesn't have anything to do with heat, we're asking the people that live in that house what kind of a heat source they have. Um, just yesterday, one of the environmental specialists found a home. Um, she was called out for a leaky roof, and they were using a stove to heat their house, a gas stove. So all the complaints that come in, that's one of the questions that we ask. We're really um, going to start uh, reaching out on social media to educate people on the right way to heat homes. So again, in the little book areas, it has to be 65 degrees or higher. Um, space heaters need to be used properly. They cannot be plugged into extension cords um, or the power strips. Uh, any of those old gas heaters, um, not safe to be used as the sole heat source in a home and definitely not stoves. So whether it's gas or electric, um, you cannot use a stove to heat your home. It, uh, if it's electric, it can put um, a lot of uh, stress on that appliance and it can cause a fire. And then of course with a gas stove, you have carbon monoxide issues, but also the risk of fire that can happen. And um, they can always call into the health department in that landlord tenant type situation, and we can help them walk through the process of getting that repaired. So, we also have this new program called Safe and Healthy Homes. Uh, right now, it's in a pilot program, and uh, we have a thousand units set up so far. Um, and hopefully, in the first of the year, we'll be able to switch it over and open it up to more people. So, the idea of this program is for owners of rental properties or property managers like apartment complexes can sign up to be a part of this program and uh, we'll do like free courtesy inspections, we'll train employees and um, 
will even give information to renters on how to be responsible renters. And the idea is to um, have people participate in the program and have them stand out as being dedicated to um, providing safe and healthy homes for the people of Tulsa County. So by far, most of our owners in Tulsa County do a really great job and address problems as they come up. And we want to let them stand out so that whenever people are looking for homes to live in as rental properties, they'll know that that is someone that um, that will fix any issues that come up because they happen, right? In every home, something will happen and it just needs to be repaired. So this is our uh, graphic that we go through, uh, that we use for the program and we have a sticker that can be put onto a window or a magnet on a refrigerator that kind of tells the tenant that the owner is a part of the program and you can always call and visit our website for more information about that. So this is the main, um, the main part of our Safe and Healthy Homes program is a renter walkthrough inspection. So the idea is that whenever a tenant's gonna sign a lease, before they sign the lease, the owner or the property manager and the tenant walk through the property together, checking some main um, things that need to be addressed, like make sure there's heat, make sure there's a smoke detector, and then they can start talking about what to do, what the process is if something does happen in the home, like there's a leaky faucet, how do they get it fixed? and both parties can sign off on this, um, on this document and each one gets a copy. And that's really what our Safe and Healthy Homes program is based off of. A renter walkthrough inspection, both, part both parties get a copy and they're also discussing what to do when something happens. All right, so we have recently um, been awarded a lead grant um, from HUD and it's over a million dollars. And so right now our department is focusing on, um, you know, creating that program and figuring out, you know, how we're going to handle, how we're gonna distribute that money. So the idea is to remove some uh, hazards caused by lead from the home. And so stay tuned to find out more information about that program, we're really excited. Uh, environmental Health Services, we have a lot of programs. So now we're just gonna go through and talk about all the different things that we do for the people of Tulsa County. So one, um, about a year ago, we started inspecting the, the pools. So that was a different department in uh, Tulsa Health Department, but now it's in Environmental Health. And so every year uh, we have over 700 public school pools and spas that are inspected routinely. And then we do education classes on pool safety, up to 400, about 400 people a year in seven classes. And then Roger Roth is our program coordinator for that. And then we also do lodging inspections. So also about a year ago, our department started doing the hotel inspections for um, Tulsa County. And um, so we have 157 lodging establishments that we do routine inspections on. And then um, that doesn't include like Airbnbs or bed and breakfast, it's just those lodging. And so whenever we go in to, to do those inspections, we're looking for like the cleanliness of the room. We discuss bed bugs and how they approach that whenever they get a bed bug complaint. And uh, we also look at the food whenever we need to. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize the Tulsa Health Department does, as far as our air quality program, um, we inspect the, um, underground storage tanks for their vapor recovery system. So whenever um, gas stations receive gasoline and there's vapors that come out of those tanks, they have to capture those vapors, which um, help out a lot on those ozone alert days and help for air quality for people that are sensitive to that. So every year we do inspections on those tanks to make sure that their caps and gaskets um, are in place. And then we also have a burning variance program. So again, with the air quality, if you live outside of the city of Tulsa, you can burn like trash, not trash. <laughs> That's really funny. I say that all day long, we can't burn trash. We, uh, you can burn brush and you have to have a permit in the county, not the city, you can't burn in the city, but uh, we issue those permits. And then for large pieces of land where they're clearing out trees for development, they, they dig um, open pit incinerators. So it's just a big hole in the ground with an air curtain and they push the debris into that, that hole and it burns it really hot and gets rid of it and helps control the smoke. 
We also do asbestos permit inspections. So anytime a commercial property is going in and they're gonna do some uh, remodeling um, or even a demo of a home um, or a business, uh, they have to have a permit and they have to have licensed people that remove the asbestos before they demo. And we go in and inspect that process before they get started. So this is really neat. You can see that there's glove bags that they can use for really small areas, or they might even take an entire room and put plastic all around, and then they have ways to monitor the air quality, and we make sure that the people that are removing the asbestos are licensed and permitted, and that they have a plan, and where they're taking that asbestos whenever they're done removing it so that it's safe for the public. Oops, I pushed a button that I shouldn't push. All right, we also have a vector control program for rats. So we uh, we do get rat complaints, quite a few actually this year. Maybe it's from the flooding from the river, but uh, we inspect the area, we do surveys of the neighborhood, we educate people on um, how to get rid of the rats, like get rid of the bird feeders and get your dog food inside at night, that kind of stuff. And we can also bait problem areas if needed. One thing that our department does is we're really focused on our community partners. So we build these relationships with other agencies in Tulsa County so that we can address problems and combine resources to help take care of issues. Um, we have different community task force all over the county that, we're, that we participate in so that we can build those relationships so that we know what other agencies do and what they're responsible for so we're not working over each other. We're also involved in the Community Health Improvement Plan, the CHIP program. There's a built environment that uh, we contribute to regularly. So then, of course, we have our mosquito program, and a lot of people know about that. Uh, anytime anyone asks what I do, I always say, well, you know the mosquitoes, right? The trucks that drive around? That's the department that I'm in, because everybody knows about the mosquitoes. So um, in the county, we have uh, complaints that we received, or in the city, the entire county, is also county. We receive the complaints, we set our traps, we take those samples of mosquitoes and we test them for West Nile, and then that's how we determine where we're going to spray. Um, we also larvicide uh, stagnant water around swimming pools or ditches. Um, we were very busy this summer with all the historic flooding around Tulsa County, and um, fortunately, with the mother, within the last week, that program has really slowed down quite a bit, even though I got a couple complaints today on mosquitoes, so we'll have to get that addressed. We also have the water lab that, uh, that we have here at the Tulsa Health Department. If you want more information about that, you could always go to our website, and they have uh, all the different things that we test for and the Christ list. And uh, any questions? Uh, so for Facebook Live, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, sign off. Um, thank you for watching. And um, if you have any questions, you can always contact our office at 918-595-4200. Um, you can get on the website at tulsa-health.org and submit an online complaint. And uh, thanks again for participating.